Krishna, 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 hey, Krishna, 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 hey, Krishna, 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 Rakshamam, Krishna, 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 Bahimam, Rama Raghava, Rama Raghava, Rama Raghava Rakshamam, Krishna Keshava, Krishna Keshava, Krishna Keshava Bahimam. Okay, so chapter 30, Krishna is hiding from the gopis. We're beginning from the paragraph, the gopis then address the Tulsi plants. Um, so we're just a couple of paragraphs into this chapter already. Um, and essentially Krishna has called out the gopis to the forest, the dangerous forest, as he said. Um, and they've come out, out taking all risks to come and see him on the plea of his flute song. And um, they began a, you know, a kind of spiritual discussion there like as to whether they should even be there or not. Uh, but the gopis defeated Krishna by their arguments um, and by their devotion, uh, their dedication to serving him. And so then they performed the Rasa dance together, which is not an ordinary dance, which we discussed in a lot of detail, um, because of course the gopis are the eternal associates of Krishna, um, or they, they were gopis that also joined from this material world to join the eternal love dance of Krishna in the spiritual world. And so um, this is the highest expression of devotion to Krishna. But they gave up everything to be with him um, in the form of the gopis. And then Krishna disappeared from that love dance. And that, that teaches us that Krishna is actually not attached. He's completely self-satisfied. Um, so the gopis, they've now gone to look for Krishna who's disappeared from the vision. And their remembrance of him is actually driving them into a kind of madness and ecstasy. Um, and so they're asking all of the plants and trees and even animals in the forest that in the dead of the night, have you seen Krishna? Okay, so this is where we're up to now. And... Um, if we can have some devotees who would like to volunteer for reading, then it would be very appreciated. Um, Jay Prakash Prabhu is down for being first. So I'll let you start now, Prabhu. <coughs> the gopis then address the tulsi, tulsi plants. Dear Tulsi, you are much beloved by Lord Krishna because your leaves are always at his lotus feet. Dear Malati flower, Dear Malaka flower, dear jasmine flower, all of you must have been touched by Krishna while he was passing this way after giving us transcendental enjoyment. Have you seen Madhava passing this way? O oh, mango trees, O oh, trees of jackfruit, O oh, pear trees and asana trees, O oh, blackberries <coughs> and bale trees and trees of the kadama flower. You are all very pious trees to be living on the bank of Yamuna. Krishna must have passed through this way. Will you kindly let us know which way he has gone? <coughs> so here, um, we're discussing how, in one sense, the gopis are you know, so eager to find Krishna that in one sense, they're asking even the, the non-moving living beings, i.e. the trees and plants. Um, but in another sense, actually, they, can in, they have an indication that Krishna has been here how do they know? Because all of the all of the um, living beings in Vrindavan Dham, they're all spiritually fully conscious. Yeah. So these are also not ordinary shrubs. These are all fully conscious living beings, fully Krishna conscious. And had Krishna passed this way, these these trees and plants, of course, would be in complete ecstasy because Krishna has come close to them and has gone past and touched them. 
um, with his fingers or with his feet or whatever, you know, as, as he brushes past them in the forest. And so they're feeling a great bliss and the gopis have detected this. And therefore, they are um, inquiring where Krishna has gone. All right. Prabhu, if you'd like to continue, unless there's any questions now. Okay. The gopis then looked upon the ground they were traversing and began to address the earth. Dear earthly planet, we do not know how many penances and austerities we have undergone to be now living with the footprints of Lord Krishna upon you. You are very jolly. The hairs on your body are they, these jubilant trees and plants. Lord Krishna must have been very much pleased with you. Otherwise, how could he have embraced you in the form of the boar when you were submerged in water? He delivered you, taking the whole weight of your existence on his tusks. So it is interesting that the gopis have um, remembered other pastimes of the Lord, specifically in the form of Varahadev here. Yeah? Isn't that interesting? What was interesting about that uh, for you all? I find that interesting. How many remember the pastime of Varaha Avatar? What form was the Varaha Avatar and what did he do? It was the form of a boar. Yeah. And um, he uplifted the earth because um, I think one of the demons was, uh, you know, harassing the earth. So he um, uplifted the earth from the deep ocean and rescued her <clears throat> from um, the ocean on the task. Yeah, that's right. So in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the third canto is a description of the Varaha avatar who saved the earth from drowning at the bottom of the universe. Yeah. So one might ask, how can the earth drown? <laughs> because the earth is... Um, the earth itself contains a body of water, the oceans. But we understand from our scriptures that um, by design of the universe, which is like an eggshell shape, half of the lower half is filled with the primordial waters, yeah, or the Garbhadakha ocean. So because this demon, Hiran Hiranyaksha, who is the brother of Hiranyakashipu, he plundered the earth. He plundered all the minerals and gold and, you know, um, oils and things like that. He plundered the earth so much so that the earth came off orbit and fell into the, fell down off, off its axes towards the uh, Garbhadak Ocean, which is at the bottom of the lower half of the universe. And so it's quite appropriate then that the Lord comes in the form of a, a boar, yeah, or a hog. Yeah, because you've seen hogs before. They generally live around um, marshy or muddy regions, isn't it? Yeah. So how wonderful is it then that the Lord, he can come in the form of a hog and do what hogs do best and they can dig things out from muddy places. So he digged out the earth um, and, and rescued her, Bhudevi. He rescued Mother Earth in that way. <clears throat> and then he defeated that demon, Hiranyaksha. So this is interesting, isn't it? Because the gopis are remembering this, okay? They're not thinking of Krishna as an ordinary person. Yeah? They, they're fully aware that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. They're fully aware that he, he is fully Vishnu and he has so many avatars. Yeah? At this point in time. So they're addressing the earth as um, the, the wife of Vishnu. And that she is, she is more fortunate because she's had that contact with Krishna. And so Krishna has come again and he's traversing on her, on her body, the earth. So they're saying that she's looking very jubilant, you know. Um, the hairs of the body 
The hairs on your body are jubilant trees and plants. They sing. So that's very nice. Okay. Hope we can continue. After addressing the innumerable trees and plants and the earth, they turned their faces towards a beautiful deer who was looking, who were looking at them pleasingly. It appears they addressed the deer that Krishna, who is the Supreme Narayan himself, must have passed through this way along with his companion, Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. Otherwise, how is it possible that the aroma of his garland, which is smeared with the red kumkum from the breast of the goddess of fortune, can be perceived in the breeze blowing here? It appears that they have passed through here and touched your bodies, and thus you are filling you are feeling so pleasant and looking forward, looking towards us with sympathy. Will you kindly, therefore, inform us which way Krishna has gone? Krishna is the well-wisher of Vrindavan. He is as kind to you as to us. Therefore, after leaving us, he must have been present in your company. All fortunate trees, we are thinking of Krishna, the younger brother of Balaram. While passing through here, which one with one hand resting on the shoulder of the goddess of fortune and other hand twirling a lotus flower. He must have been very much pleased to accept your obeisances and he must have glanced at you with great pleasure. Yes, so anything notable from this paragraph, one of you? So I was thinking how we can see um, how the gopis have been humbled um, by Krishna's disappearing from them because um, that was his desire. He wanted to, because they were feeling very proud that Krishna was dancing with them at one point and then he left. And so Krishna wanted to humble them by leaving. And there's an indication of that humility because they're appreciating that they were actually with the Supreme Lord, isn't it? Again, they're um, addressing the deer and saying that Krishna is the Supreme Narayan himself. Hmm? Uh, I also feel that, you know, the gopis, um, uh, it, they, must, they must be on the transcendental platform because they didn't have that envy like a normal human being that, oh, okay, we, I'm, um, you know, lamenting for this thing and you had it. So like, you know, but they really pleased that, you know, Krishna went past the deers. <clears throat> so they, they weren't, they, you can't see even a hinge of envy in their, uh, tinge of envy in their, and they're talking like that. They're really pleased that Krishna, you know, um, passed by the tears, the uh, deers and um, blessed them. So it, it's like, they are on that platform where that, you know, um, there's no envy or uh, there's no pride anymore in their, um, from the paragraph, we can feel it, that there's no envy or pride amongst themselves. They're happy mm -hmm. that, you know, Krishna has blessed the earth and Krishna has also blessed the deers and uh, wherever he's gone and walked, he's blessed everybody. Yeah. That's right. So wherever Krishna goes, he spreads good fortune. So um, they're very sure that wherever Krishna is going, um, he's with his companion Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. And so therefore everyone who is in that environment is being blessed. <clears throat> um, and also it's interesting that in general, in the in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's never any mention of Srimati Radharani being with Krishna, at least not by her name. So Srimati Radharani's name is never mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam. But there are hints, like here is one, um, that he must have passed through 
this way along with his companion Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. Yeah? So there are hints like that. Does anybody know why? Why Srimati Radharani isn't even mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam? can try. I'm not sure if it's right or not. Um, can you hear me, Prabhu? Yes. Hare Krishna. Um, Hare Krishna, Prabhu. So is it because it was um, 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 initially had from Siddhartha Goswami, who was in his previous life uh, the bird, um, uh, who used to reside in Vrindavan and um, see the pastimes of Krishna and Radha and was a, was, was a huge devotee of Radha Rani. So uh, when he was born at Siddhartha Goswami, he, um, I'm just thinking of Radha Rani, he was so overwhelmed, he couldn't bring himself to mention her in the book. So uh, Radha Rani was mentioned, but only um, uh, between lines or in a hidden form. Yeah, did everybody hear that? Not, not quite. Okay. So it's, it's understood that Shukadev Goswami, who is the narrator of the Srimad Bhagavatam, he's actually a great devotee of Srimati Radharani. Yeah. Um, so Panchali nicely narrated that story. He's actually Srimati Radharani's parrot. Yeah. Hence the name Shuka, which also means parrot. <laughs> So Shukadev Goswami, he's a, he's Srimati Radharani's parrot. But he's coming in this in his pastime as a in this pastime in the Shima, to narrate the Srimad Bhagavatam, he's coming as a sage. Yeah. And we see that many times that the eternal associates of the Lord, they come time and again um, to perform the different activities that the to be there when the Lord performs his different activities. So Shukadev Goswami had come for the purpose of narrating the Srimad Bhagavatam to the grandson of Arjuna, who is Maharaj Pariksha, and that's how we have the Srimad Bhagavatam today. Yeah, so, <clears throat> so with uh, because Srimati Radharani is so dear to Shukadev Goswami, then um, he hesitates to say her name. Yeah, he hesitates to say her name. So he tells everything without mentioning her name. Because he doesn't want to lose his consciousness. He doesn't want to lose his focus out of his love. Just as we can see, the, the, the gopis, they're mad after Krishna. You know, they're losing, their, they're losing their minds just chasing after Krishna. So he would not be able to do his, his seva, his service to Maharaj Pariksha. He would not be able to narrate the Srimad Bhagavatam, which needs to be heard. If he if he um, is overcome by his love for Radharani, so this is actually very instructive because what comes first, you know, one's own pleasure or the service to Krishna? What do you think? One's own pleasure in serving Krishna or the service to Krishna itself? Service to Krishna itself, himself, itself. Yeah, the service, the service to Krishna itself is the priority. Um, and there's many examples of that. So Shukadeva Goswami is one great example of that because he prioritizes that I need to speak the Shema Bhagavatam, that's my service, that's my seva. Um, and if, if saying the name of Srimati Radharani is is going to give me so much pleasure and I'm going to be, you know, unable to continue this service out of, you know, complete love of her and feel all the ecstasies of remembering her, then I better not say her name. So that's, that's the understanding of why the name of Srimati Radharani isn't in the Bhagavatam. Although there are hints, like in this particular verse. Um, <clears throat> If there's no other comments or questions, we could continue on. Um, so my dad is going to read next now. Yeah, dad? Yeah, Haribo. 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 
Yeah, uh, some of the gopis then address their gopi friends. Dear friends, why don't you question these creepers who are so jubilant, embracing the big trees as if the tree were their husbands? It appears that the flowers of the creepers must have been touched by the nail of Krishna, otherwise, how could they feel so jubilant? Okay. Yeah, continue. After searching for Krishna here and there, the gopis became fatigued and then, then they began to talk like mad women. They could satisfy themselves only by imitating the different pastimes of Krishna. One of them imitated the demon Putna, and one of them imitated Krishna and sucked her breast. One gopi imitated hand-driven cart, and another gopi lay down beneath the cart and threw up her legs touching the will of the God. As Krishna did to kill the demon Shaktasura, one gopi imitated child Krishna and lay down on the ground. And one gopi became a demon Tranvatra and carried the small child Krishna by force into the sky. And one of the gopis began to imitate Krishna while he was attempting to walk, ringing his ankle bell. Two gopis imitated Krishna and Balram, and many others imitated the coward boyfriends. One gopi assumed the form of Bakasura, and other forced her to fall down as the demon Bakasura did when he was killed. Similarly, another gopi defeated Vatasura, just as Krishna used to call his cow by their different names. <clears throat> so the gopis imitated him, calling the cows by their respective names. One of the gopis began to play on a flute and another praised away on, on her the way Krishna boyfriends praised him while he played on his flute. One of the gopis took another gopi on her shoulder, just as Krishna used to take his boyfriends. Absorbed in thoughts of Krishna, the gopi who was carrying the friends began to boast that she was Krishna herself. All of you just see my movement. One of the gopi raised her hand with a covering garment and said, now don't be afraid of the torrents of rain and severe hurricanes, I'll save you. In this way, she imitated the lifting of Govardhan Hill. One gopi forcefully put her feet on the head of the another gopi and said, you rascal Kalia, I shall punish you severely. You must leave this place. I have descended to this earth to punish all kinds of miscreants. <clears throat> Another gopi told her friend, just see the flame of the forest fire are coming to devour us. Please close your eyes and I shall immediately save you from this imminent danger. Okay, so what's being described in this paragraph? All of Krishna's pastime so far. Yeah. He's been doing. Yeah, that's right. So it's a very nice paragraph, isn't it? Just nicely summarizes so many of the pastimes of Krishna. Did you like that reading? Yeah. So have you noticed that um, in many different places, the devotees are remembering all the wonderful activities of Krishna? Yeah. 
So that's all that's required to be Krishna conscious, to go back to Godhead. Yeah. Janma karma chame divyam evam yaviti tatvatatyak pa deha puna janma naiti mamiti so arjuna. Krishna says to Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita, such a key verse that um, by remembering my transcendental birth and pastimes, yeah, you don't become influenced by your own karma, your own birth and pastimes, <laughs> your, birth, your own birth and activities. Yeah? And uh, by remembering Krishna's pastimes, um, we can go back to Godhead by falling in love with Krishna, by reading Krishna's leelas through the you know, authorized teachings. Then we can actually develop love for Krishna again. We can revive our true consciousness, our Krishna consciousness. And we can go back to Krishna and play with him eternally. And that's exactly what the gopis are doing, right? They're feeling that separation from Krishna. So uh, if, if you don't have Krishna and you want Krishna, then there's no other shelter but Krishna himself, his, his name, his form, his qualities, his pastimes, remembering him in these different ways. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyone else have any comments on this? Questions from what we've read so far? I could count nine past times here. I think that's right. So the pastime of Bhutana is one that they remembered. The Shakatasura, which is the cart demon. Trinivata, who's the whirlwind demon. And Bakasura, who's the, um, he's a crane, a bird. <clears throat> Vatsasura, who's a demon in the form of a calf, a little calf. Yeah. Then they remembered how Krishna played with his friends. They would carry each other on their shoulders and they would have a like a wrestling match, holding each other on their shoulders. Or they play races and things like that. <clears throat> and then you have the Govardhan Hill pastime and the Kaliya pastime, Krishna dancing on the heads of his, the serpent Kaliya. And, the, and Krishna extinguishing the forest fire. So these are the different pastimes which the gopis were remembering. And perhaps there's so many more which haven't been mentioned in the book itself. Yeah. Because there were like countless numbers of gopis, you know, all together remembering Krishna performing the different pastimes. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so let's continue reading. In, in this way, all the gopis were madly feeling the absence of Krishna. They inquired about the, him from the trees and plants. In some places, they found the imprints of the marks on the soles of his feet, namely the flag the lotus flower, the tridian, and the thunderbolt, etc. After seeing those footprints, they exclaim, oh, here is the impression of the marks of the souls of Krishna, sweet. All the marks such as the flag, the lotus flower, the tridian, and the thunderbolts are distinctly visible here. They begin to follow the fruit, foot, footprints, and shortly they saw another set of footprints beside them, and immediately they become very sorry. Dear friend, just see whose are these other footprints. They are beside the fruit, footprints of the son of Maharaj Nanda. It is certainly Krishna passing through, resting his hand on some of other gopis exactly as 
an elephant goes side by side with his beloved mate. <clears throat> we must therefore understand that this particular gopi served Krishna with great, greater affectionate love than ourselves. Because of this, although he has left us, he could not leave her company. He has taken her along with him. Dear friends, this imagine how the dust of this place is transcendentally glorious. The dust of the lotus feet of Krishna is worshipped even by the Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva and the goddess of, the, of fortune, Lakshmi. But at the same time, we are very sorry that this particular gopi had gone along with Krishna for she is sharing the nectar of Krishna's kisses and leaving us aside to lament. Oh friend, just see at this particular spot, we do not see the footprints of that gopi. It appears that because there were some pinpricks from the dry grass, Krishna took Radharani on his shoulder. Oh, she is so dear to him. Krishna must have picked up some flowers in this spot to satisfy Radharani because here where he stood direct to get the flowers from the high branches of the tree, we find only half the impression of this, of his feet. Dear friend, just see how Krishna must have sat down here with Radharani and <clears throat> tried to set flowers in her hair. You can certain you can certain that both of them sat together here. Krishna is self-sufficient. He has nothing to enjoy from any other source. Yet, just to satisfy his devotee, he treated Radharani exactly as lusty boy treat his girlfriend. Krishna is so kind that he always tolerates the disturbances created by his girlfriends. Okay. So now um, it has been revealed, you could say by Mother Earth, where Krishna is going. Yeah, what was the clue in the beginning of this paragraph? How did they find out where Krishna had gone? So there, here, the, here are the gopis in the middle of the night. It's pitch black. They didn't have torches or street lights. <laughs> yeah. And they're in the forest and they're looking for Krishna in the dark, isn't it? And they're just, you know, coming across trees and plants and they can't find him. But they do find something which gives them a clue of where Krishna is. What do they find? What do they see in the ground? They begin to follow the footprints of Krishna. Yeah, that's right. They they saw the footprints of Krishna on the ground. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's beautifully described that these footprints of Krishna, they're not ordinary footprints, are they? What is significant? How did they identify the footprints of Krishna amongst anyone else's footprints? These days we see, you know, <clears throat> if you go along the beach or somewhere, you know, and you see footprints on the ground, right. you usually see things like, you know, the three stripes where you see the tick, <laughs> you know. We normally see like, footprints as, you know, different trainer brands, <laughs> whether it's Nike or Adidas or something, right? <laughs> We don't have anything special about our feet, but people spend a lot of money on their footwear. Huh? 
And if we ever happen to see it on the ground that, you know, oh, someone here was wearing, you know, Reebok trainers or whatever, Umbro. <laughs> That's as good as it gets in this world. <laughs> but Krishna's feet were special. His lotus feet were special because they had these markings on them. Yeah. <clears throat> Just look at your, your hands for a moment. The palms of your hands. What do you see? Lines. Lines. Any, any, uh, any palmist, palmistry experts here? Is that what it's called? Palmistry. No. What do these lines mean? <laughs> a lifeline. Lifeline, yeah. One of them is a lifeline. Mm. Anything else? Uh, there's a line of how long you will live there's another line of your fortune another line for um, you know different things health or career or, mm. um, <clears throat> I'm not an expert in that science so our lines show our karma yeah mm. according to that that science of that branch of Vedic knowledge. Yeah? <clears throat> Once you, someone asks you, um, can you, can you read my palm? <laughs> Imagine you meet Shila Prabhupada, what's the first thing you would ask him? <laughs> can you read my palm? <laughs> someone said to Prabhupada one day. <laughs> and Prabhupada was like a little bit hesitant, you know, like, this is just, you know, this is not what I do. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but the person was really adamant. <laughs> Asking Prabhupada, can you read my palm? So yeah. Prabhupada said, okay, show me. And Prabhupada was like, so he was looking and he said, birth, death, disease, and old age. <laughs> that pretty much sums up what's on the markings on our hands. <laughs> and Prabhupada repeats this message in his books. That, um, you know, in this with this material body, you're going to get four things for sure. Birth old age, disease, and death, you'll get these four things for sure. Yeah. Now Krishna's markings on his lotus hands and his lotus feet are very different, of course. Um, it said that one in, in one place in the scriptures, it shows, uh, it describes who is an avatar. How do we identify who is an avatar? Who is a genuine avatar? Especially useful in this day and age where in India, you know, um, there's always someone in the village who's claiming to be God. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> there's a there's a genuine check balance system given in the scriptures that different avatars will have different markings on their hands, on their feet. And it's described where they'll be, um, where their appearance will happen, where their birth will be, and what their mission is. Yeah. So the gopis here have, have, have noticed that Krishna has these specific markings, the flag, the lotus, the trident, the thunderbolt, yeah? And there are so many other such markings. <clears throat> this is really something to meditate on. You know, sometimes you can get these pictures which have the painting or the picture of the lotus hands and the lotus feet of Krishna. You know, it's considered very auspicious to, to meditate on the lotus feet of Krishna, even while chanting or otherwise. So the gopis are instantly new. <laughs> this is Krishna's lotus feet. <laughs> yeah. No. And like in uh, Vaikuntha, um, and I might have said this in my previous discussions with you, the Lord wears sandals, he wears the paduka. But here in Vrindavan, Krishna runs around bare feet. <laughs> so this is a special feature of Vrindavan Dham, that Krishna's lotus feet mark the land of Vrindavan everywhere. Yeah, so you can't escape Krishna. You can't help but remember Krishna in Vrindavan Dham. So this is the beginning of this paragraph. <clears throat> Not only did they see Sri Krishna's lotus feet, um, his footprints, but they also saw another set of footprints, right? And they became very sorry. It says, 
you know, they became very sorry. Oh, Krishna has gone with somebody. <laughs> he hasn't left all of us, but it wasn't me. <laughs> okay, so there's a mixed feeling here that they're feeling very sorry, but then later is explained that. Um, they come to terms with that. They understand that this particular gopi, so Krishna, is greater affection, greater affectionate love than ourselves. Because of this, although he has left us, he could not leave her company. Hmm? This is a very famous verse in the Srimad Bhagavata, in this chapter 30, um, it's text number 28. It goes, uh, Anaya Radito Nunam, Bhagavan Haririshwara, Yano Vidaya Govinda, Vidoyam Anayadraha. So I'm not um, very good at Sanskrit, so hopefully that's how it's recited. But this word is very significant in this verse that uh, Anaya Radita. Aradita, it's almost like the name of Radharani. Aradita. Aradita means um, the perfect worshipper. Aradita, the perfect worshipper. So it's indicating, although Sukadeva Goswami doesn't say the name of Radharani, it's indicating that Radharani is the supreme worshipper. Just as Krishna is the supreme worshipable, Srimati Radharani is the supreme worshipper. And this is very significant for us because in our international society for Krishna consciousness, in, in ISKCON, we are all the worshippers of Radha Krishna. Hmm? So, so we worship both Radha and Krishna. We worship the worshipable and the worshipper, the best worshipper, together. Yeah. <clears throat> so the gopis have identified that Srimati Radharani is the greatest worshipper of Krishna. Yeah. That Krishna could not even leave her. <clears throat> and then it is goes. They go on to explain. Um, by their by their like detective work <laughs> you know oh krishna must have stood here because you can see the imprints a little bit deeper she must have been climbing on his shoulder because there's only half a footprint of hers here and i can see that they must have picked flowers from here because you know the, the trees are shaped differently here you know uh, or the you know the, the flowers are missing from this portion of the tree so they're looking at like all of the exploits of Radha and Krishna now, yeah, in the forest. And they're like really enamored um, to note that even though Krishna is self-satisfied, we say that Krishna doesn't need anyone for anything actually, because that's, he's God, his, his very nature is that he's independent, he's completely self-satisfied. But at the same time, Krishna is so favorably disposed to his devotees. Krishna is so uh, endeared by the devotion of his devotees. Yeah? So even though Krishna doesn't need to be doing anything for anyone at any time, that doesn't mean that he doesn't do anything for anyone ever. In fact, quite the opposite. is Krishna's very nature um, to want to love and serve his devotees. It's his very heart to please his devotees. This is actually how wonderful Krishna is. That he's completely independent, you know. He doesn't need anything from anyone, yet he finds so much pleasure himself in serving his devotees. Um, so this is a very notable point about Krishna. So Krishna stopped to pick flowers for Radharani. Yeah. So this is the sweetness of Krishna. <clears throat> so 
So is there any thoughts or comments before we continue from here? Okay, then uh, is anyone else who's reading now? Would anyone else like to read? Just for the last paragraph. Shashi, Mataji, yes, please. In this way, all the gopis pointed out the faults of the particular gopi who had been taken alone by Krishna. They said that this chief gopi, that Radharani, must be very proud of her position, thinking herself the greatest of the gopis. Yet how could Krishna take her away alone, leaving all of us aside? unless she is extraordinarily qualified and beautiful. She must have taken Krishna into the deep forest and told him, my dear Krishna, I am now very tired. I cannot go any further. Please carry me. Whatever you, please carry me wherever you like. When Krishna was spoken to in this way, he might have told Radharani, all right, better get on my shoulders, but immediately Krishna must have disappeared and now Radharani must be lamenting for him. My dear lover, my dearest, you are so fine and so powerful. Where have you gone? I am nothing but your most obedient maidservant. I am very much aggrieved. Please come and be with me again, Krishna. However, is still, however, is, sorry. Please come and be with me again, Krishna. However, is not coming to her. He must be watching her from a distance place and enjoying her sorrow. Right, so... Um... This pastime continues now, and the gopis are taking further observations of um, the evidence left by Krishna and Srimati Radharani. <laughs> yes. And they've identified that Krishna has ultimately left Radharani as well. Hmm? So it seems that Krishna has asked Srimati Radharani to get onto his shoulder so that she can reach or rather she's tired so she can she can rest um, but then at that point Krishna disappeared yeah and and then Srimati Radharani being tired was left helplessly in one in one of this one of these places and she's now lamenting for Krishna yeah for those gopis they haven't seen her yet They've understood that um, from just the, observing the environment around them. So Krishna, at the same time, as um, being so sub submissive and so subservient to his devotees, is always eager to increase their loving devotion, you know. It doesn't plateau, devotional service. It doesn't just become, uh, it doesn't just become um, boring or just, you know, just flat lines. It just becomes kind of same-ish, you know, like our lives in the material world. You wake up and it's just like, oh, I don't really want to get out of bed, you know, same old thing again, <laughs> right? <laughs> same thing another day. But the spiritual world is not at all like that. Every day is a different festival, yeah. And uh, whether the and something which is very difficult to understand in our Vaishnav Siddhanta is that fact that um, whether in union with Krishna, whether together with Krishna, or whether in separation, um, there is still that. Ex the, that's that um, loving exchange is still there yeah um, so this is actually a very difficult thing to understand 
Now, when Krishna is with the gopis, that's called Sambhog. Now, when Krishna is with them, they feel a lot of uh, pleasure and, and joy being with Krishna. But then when Krishna leaves them, their hankering for Krishna increases, increases so much. And because their desire for Krishna increases so much, within that, their joy and, and happiness also increases because their intensity of love increases. So this is the nature of spiritual love. This is the nature of pure love. That it actually increases whether they're with Krishna and it increases further when they're not with Krishna. And then again when they reunite with Krishna. So the separation is called Vipralamba. And then when they again go to Samboga, when they again have that union again with Krishna, um, then they feel pacified, they feel satisfied again. Yeah. So it's never that, you know, when they're with Krishna, it's the most excellent and exciting thing. And then when they're away from Krishna, it's just, oh, this boy is just always, you know, <laughs> he comes and goes as he pleases. <laughs> Can't stand him, <laughs> you know. But actually, they're, they feel so dire separation that within that separation, they feel a sense of happiness, which we cannot understand, which is inconceivable to us because of the purity of their love. And so that serves to have that union again with Krishna. Hmm? I don't know if that, if I've explained that very well, it makes sense. If not, then uh, there's nothing more I can say on that. We just have to wait there till we can experience it for ourselves. So this is the nature of the spiritual love. So Krishna has, has now left Srimati Radharani as well. Okay. Um, and so we'll read about that in the next paragraph and then we'll finish this section for today. So Shashi, what would you, would you like to carry on for the next one? All the puppies then went further and further into the forest, searching out Krishna, but then they learned that actually Radharani was left alone by Krishna, they became very sorry. This is the test of Krishna's consciousness. In the beginning, they were a little envious that Krishna had taken Radharani alone, leaving aside all the other gopis. But as soon as they knew that Krishna had also left Radharani and that she was alone lamenting for him, they became more sympathetic to her. The gopis found Radharani and heard everything from her about how she had misbehaved with Krishna and how she was proud and was insulted for her pride. After hearing all this, they became actually very sympathetic. Then all the gopis, including Radharani, proceeded further into the forest until they could no longer see the moonlight. Shall I continue? Um, let's just pause there because we're up to time now. Okay. We've just got this one last paragraph now, haven't we? I think we can do that one yeah. next week because that will next week because that will be a discussion in itself. Um, so let's just take the last couple of moments to discuss this one. <clears throat> so they, ha they have indeed found Srimati Radharani now. And um, she's confirmed to them now that the reason for Krishna leaving her is because she did feel a little sense of pride in being alone with Krishna and that he had abandoned all the other gopis to be with her. Um, so, um, Srila Sanatana Goswami, he has an interesting explanation to this dynamic. Um, and he explains that he, Krishna is teaching us, um, Krishna is teaching us the, um, the futility of um, the parakya rasa or the male and female relationship 
he's teaching us the um, the extent of a, the extent of attachment as well uh, to the opposite sex, yeah, and and the amount of hurt that can come from it. So we can see that in the mood of the gopis, where because Krishna is completely detached, he can go away and have no um, no qualms about it in one sense. Um, and so he's using that as a as a means of teaching us that um, we should be very careful in our dealings with one another. Because look at the condition now of the gopis. You know, they're quite they're feeling quite destitute without him, without Krishna, even after giving up everything for him. Hmm? Um, and so Sanatana Goswami gives a very interesting prayer because um, would you like to hear it? We can end on this nice, beautiful prayer. Yes, please. Yeah. So while uh, we see that Shukadev Goswami hasn't mentioned the name of Srimati Radharani at all, um, Sanatan Goswami has done quite the opposite here in relation to this, this particular part of the pastime, where he writes this very beautiful verse. He comments on the Srimad Bhagavatam in his book, Sri Krishna Lila Stava. And he writes, uh, yeah, in beautiful Sanskrit poetry. Radha Radita Radesha, Radhika Prana Valava, Radha Ramana Vandetam, Radhika Prema Nirjita. Yeah. So quite the opposite of Srila Sukadev Goswami who never mentions the name of Srimati Radharani. Here he's pretty much packed the verse as much as you can with the names of Srimati Radharani. <laughs> yes, he says, Radha Radhita Radesha, which means, O Lord of Radha, fully worshipped by Radha, uh, treasure of Radha's life. Yeah? Radhika Pranavallabha, uh, oh, enjoy of uh, so then he says uh, Radhika Pranavalava, which means treasure of Radhika's life. Then Radha Ramana Vande Tvam. Oh, enjoy of Radha, I offer my respects to you. Radhika Prema Nirjita, who were, who were defeated by Radhika's love. So, a nice, nice prayer there from Sanatana Goswami. Which we can end with this evening. So he's acknowledging here the, the greatness of Srimati Radharani's love, the special quality of Srimati Radharani's love, um, from which all the other gopis, uh, by, by the mercy of Srimati Radharani, all the gopis, they also get an entrance into the pastimes uh, of the Rasa dance by the mercy of Srimati Radharani. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we are the, the worshippers of Shri Shri Radha and Krishna together. Okay, um, so I'll just stop here now. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai.